Bass fishing in 2024 looks drastically different than it did three years ago. From the top baits and techniques to the anglers at the top of the professional level, bass fishing has undergone a major transformation over the past few years. In the 20 years I've been seriously invested in bass fishing, I don't think I've seen a period of change quite as dramatic as the one we're experiencing right now. As some of you may know, I used to fish a lot of tournaments in my teenage years, but I took about a three year break in 2013 to focus on college. I then came back to make YouTube videos in 2017, and during my break, I didn't feel like the top techniques and strategies in fishing changed all that much, and I felt like a lot of the experience I'd accumulated the 10 years prior was still relevant and very effective on the lake. However, over the past two years, I took a similar break to focus on other projects like the Deep Dive app and Core Tackle, and during that break, I feel like I've been left behind by a lot of newer anglers on my lakes and anglers at the top level of bass fishing. I believe the main reason for this is the increase in popularity and understanding of forward-facing sonar or live scope. Now I know that forward-facing sonar is a hot button topic in the industry right now and there are a lot of mixed opinions on the subject, but there's no denying that it is a powerful tool that has been instrumental in the majority of the top tournament wins this year in 2024. To be competitive in tournament fishing, or even feel like you're finding the best pattern on your lake, it's almost mandatory at this point that you utilize forward-facing sonar in some way. One thing I am confident in saying is that forward-facing sonar isn't a cure-all technology. At this point, almost all, if not all, of the professional anglers at the top level of bass fishing have forward-facing sonar, but not every single angler is catching fish every event. There are still anglers that struggle to catch fish even with forward-facing sonar, depending on the certain lakes or conditions they find themselves in. On the other hand, there are some anglers who seem to always find fish and catch fish with forward-facing sonar, regardless of the season, the lake type, or the situation they're put in. The best example I can give is Drew Gill, who's a pro angler on the Major League Fishing Tours. He's one of the best forward-facing sonar anglers on the tour right now, and he is adept at catching fish with his forward-facing sonar in a variety of conditions. For example, he has a few top 10 finishes, fishing for deep suspended bass in clear water there chasing shad, and also a few top 10 finishes fishing in super shallow muddy water in one to five feet using his forward-facing sonar. In the most recent Lake Eufaula Bass Pro Tour event, he was actually the only angler in the top 10 who was able to utilize forward-facing sonar to get a top finish, and he was targeting fish in super muddy water, like six inches of visibility around shallow cover, which is something the other anglers weren't able to figure out. So forward-facing sonar isn't just this tool that anyone can pick up and use. There are definitely certain anglers who have found out how to exploit this technology to become better than their competitors. Now, I've heard a lot of people arguing that if you take away forward-facing sonar from these newer anglers, they wouldn't be competitive and they wouldn't be able to catch any fish. And I don't think that that's completely fair because these anglers grew up with forward-facing sonar and they learned the technology when it was legal in tournaments. They spent their formative years finding ways to use this technology to be competitive in tournaments and realized that their best chance of doing well was to master this technology. If the technology wasn't allowed or was illegal, there's no way of knowing if these anglers would have found other ways to be effective in tournaments, and they may have honed their craft in other ways and still been successful. But as it stands now, the technology was allowed and is currently allowed, and it's the best way going right now to be competitive in tournaments, so that's why these anglers are really hyper-focused on this technology. It's legal, and it is extremely effective. Honestly, I took advantage of technology in a very similar way back in 2008 with the introduction of side imaging. I was an early adopter of this technology and used it to win a lot of tournaments in the 2008 to 2013 range. I even finished in the top 10 of the High School Fishing World Finals, which is a 250 boat tournament, three of my four years of high school, mainly based on my skills with side imaging. At the time, I didn't hear anyone complaining about my use of side imaging, and I was actually praised by anglers for my skill at using the technology. Moreover, I've made dozens of instructional videos here on YouTube over the past seven years, and I hardly ever got any negative comments about instructing or teaching or using side imaging. However, I'd argue that I had just as big an advantage in that 2008 to 2013 range using side imaging as anglers do now who are taking full advantage of forward-facing sonar. Back then, I basically developed my entire fishing style and my techniques around side imaging and used it to my advantage to do very well in tournaments. 
That's why it's hard for me to look negatively on anglers who are taking advantage of this new technology forward-facing sonar to succeed in 2024. I also realize that a lot of the advantages I gained by learning side imaging back in the day have been taken away from me with the introduction of forward-facing sonar. Not only is it easier to interpret, but it's also a lot easier to find and see fish offshore with this technology. It's not to say that side imaging isn't relevant, but if I want to be competitive or at least have a competitive advantage on the lake, I need to learn how to implement forward-facing sonar into my process, into my techniques to be the best possible angler I can be. Now, I've been using forward-facing sonar on my channel for a little over three years, but I haven't spent that much time fishing over that time period, and I haven't spent enough time on the water with forward-facing sonar to feel like I really have a competitive edge over the average user. And I wanna change that. To confidently make instructional videos here on YouTube and to make innovative new baits for core tackle, I feel like I need to have a competitive edge over other anglers on the water. To do that, I need to stay on the cutting edge of new techniques, new strategies, new baits, things like that, so that I can share that information with you and not just give you basic information that anyone else can give you. That's just what I've always done on this channel. I try to give you the little bit of extra juice, that little bit of extra knowledge that other anglers won't share through my own personal experience. And I wanna keep doing that, but the only way I feel like I can is by mastering this new technology and also integrating forward-facing sonar with my 10 plus years of knowledge using side imaging electronics and 20 plus years of just normal fishing techniques as well. To do all of this, I'm going to start dedicating a lot more time to fishing again. And I'm going to take you along on my journey as I try to find these new competitive advantages and improve myself as an angler. This means the content on this channel is going to change a little bit. Instead of making instructional videos based on my 10 plus years of experience, I'm going to focus my content more on how I am developing new skills and techniques and share my learnings and failures and successes with you on this channel week to week as I continue to fish. Hopefully this information will be helpful for you in reducing your learning curve. And it'll also be helpful for me as I teach it to improve my skills and really analyze what I'm doing on the water to become a better angler and hopefully make you a better angler as well. And I think a good starting point is to walk you through some of the techniques and baits that I really wanna focus on over the coming months to hopefully make myself a little bit better angler. To start, I wanna begin mastering some of the trending top techniques from 2024. The most dominant technique this year is fishing a Demiki rig style bait or a jig head minnow. This is the Crush City Freeloader that you've seen Jacob Wheeler and Dustin Connell dominate the Bass Pro Tour with this year. I'm pairing it up with a standard jig head. This is just a Queen's Tackle quarter ounce tungsten jig head, but I'm gonna experiment with different sizes, different head shapes, different bait styles, things like that. I have caught fish on this style of bait before on this channel. I have several videos catching fish with forward facing sonar on the Demiki rig, but I've never really taken time to master the technique, learn the small, nuances of the weight, the color, the bait size, all those things that are really critical in watching these guys fish. They're constantly changing rods and baits and making micro adjustments that I just don't know how to do and I've never really spent the time learning. So this is going to be a bait that I have in my hand a lot and hopefully I can master this technique to the point where I can catch them as well, some of these top anglers in the world. Another trending bait this year is a glide bait. And it's something that you've seen kind of gaining popularity over the past few years professional bass fishing. It's something that I don't throw all that often because it's a very big bait, it's very intimidating. And in the past I felt like it wasn't really a tournament bait. It wasn't a bait that you could throw with consistency. But obviously anglers are figuring out how to use it to consistently get top finishes because you see it all over the place on live coverage. This is the Clutch Bait Company OG. It's just a kind of standard chopping style glide bait. And there are a lot of other glide baits on the market that I'm going to be testing out. I'm pairing that with a new glide bait rod actually from Denali. It's a Denali Lithium Pro 7 foot 10 extra heavy glide bait rod. I had them send this to me because I didn't even have a rod to throw this bait on. So I'll give you guys an update on how this rod works. I was told to pair that on the eight to one gear ratio reel. So that's what I put it on just from some of the swim bait guys I talked to on the phone. And I have not really any experience with these type baits. I don't know the situations to throw them in, the types of lakes, water clarities, anything like that. So it's going to be a big learning curve on these big baits. And I'm gonna take you along on my journey as I learn these baits and figure out how to implement them to be consistent with them on the water. 
Next, I wanna show you a few sneaky baits that I think are going to give me a competitive edge in the fact that other anglers aren't throwing them and the fish haven't seen them before. A couple of these are actually baits that we designed for core tackle that I haven't even talked about in this channel just because I haven't had as much time to make videos. The first is the new 5 aught 3 8 ounce Ozark rig. Now you may have heard of the Ozark rig from Matt's channel, but this particular size is very unique when paired with a big straight tail worm. That 3 8 ounce 5 aught Ozark rig actually causes the bait to shimmy as it falls, and I'll show you some underwater footage that looks absolutely crazy. I've already had a few friends that are catching some really big fish, including Jimmy Easterling from the Fishing Coach channel, and he's been sending me a bunch of photos of him catching five and six pounders with this type rig right here. This is just a Big Bite Baits Magnum Finesse Worm, and any straight tail big worm will work on this rig. And basically, I'm hoping to throw this around offshore cover, brush piles, rock piles, things like that. And by having a rig that actually has that wobbling fall that the fish haven't seen before, I'm hoping to trigger some extra bites. And I'm interested to see how the fish react to this rig on forward facing sonar. Maybe that wobble as they fall will trigger some extra bites. Maybe there's some ways I can swim it that are a little bit irregular. And I think that it could give me, again, a little bit of extra juice or competitive edge on the lake because fish just haven't seen anything like this before. You can pick these baits up on actually Tackle Warehouse now and on coretackle.com. I'll link it all down in the description for you. The next little sneaky rig is something that comes out of California from the owner of Bass Tricks Baits. This is the Core Tackle Wacky Shot rig I talked about in my last video, which was a little while ago, and it's paired with the four inch Bass Tricks Flash Tricks. This bait has been catching absolute giants out in California for those really pressured fish. And basically all you do is screw the Wacky Shot screw in the middle of that Bass Tricks Flash Tricks and just cast it out and work it like a wacky rig in deeper, clearer water. It is absolutely insane the big fish that are catching out in California on this rig and I'm really grateful for Brian over at Bass Tricks for letting me know about this technique and it's something that's kind of under the radar so I am kind of grateful to know about it but it's absolutely insane what this bait looks like in the water. Again, I'll try to put a, a video here. We don't have the best footage on this bait yet, but hopefully this footage will show you kind of how it works and it shows you a fish, I think, actually eating this bait. So pretty cool little deal there. You can pick that wacky shot up. Again, Tackle Warehouse, and I'll link that flash tricks in the description as well. I'm interested to see how the fish react to this on forward facing sonar as well. And it's maybe a good alternative to that Demiki rig that the fish have been seeing so much. Don't know if it's gonna be super effective, but we're gonna give it a shot. The final sneaky-ish bait that I'm gonna be throwing quite a bit is a big Magnum Flutter Spoon. This is an eight inch Ben Parker Magnum Flutter Spoon. And this is a bait that I had a lot of success with in the fall this past year on the few trips I was able to take. This big spoon draws fish on forward facing sonar extremely well. And there are some days when this is the only bait they will bite even if the fish aren't that big, pound and a half to two pound bass. Again, Jim Easterling over at the Fishing Coach YouTube channel, he has been crushing them on this big spoon on his guided fishing trips, and he's one of my buddies and also helps edit some of the videos here on this channel. And he keeps sending me videos of giant fish he's catching on this Magnum spoon and forward-facing sonar. I've heard some guys catching them on lakes in my area, clear lakes, dirtier water lakes, all kinds of stuff. So I need to really kind of dive into the spoon aspect of this. I've caught fish on big flutter spoons in the past, fishing ledges and for schools of fish, but a lot of guys are targeting individual fish that are tight to the bottom with the spoon. It's a very unique technique, something I'm going to spend a lot more time on and make instructional videos on, hopefully, if I can catch fish on it. Last but not least, we have my number one and number two confidence baits in the entire world, and I definitely want to make sure I mix these into my arsenal. The first is just a fish the moment offshore jig. This is a 5 8 ounce football jig. This is paired with a Gary Yamamoto Yama Craw. It's a new craw that I kind of like the look of, so I'm going to give that a try. But honestly, I throw a bunch of different trailers on this football jig, and you've seen me throw this fish mode offshore jig for years now. A lot of guys are catching fish still on football jigs at the top level of pro fishing. It was really big in the opens last year and got a lot of top finishes. So I think I should be able to, Im to implement this fish the moment offshore jig or a football jig into my fishing a lot this year. And because it's my number one confidence bait, I'm always gonna have it on the deck and in my hand. I am excited to really learn more about using it with forward facing sonar because I haven't really used it that much with it at all. So I'm going to give you guys a lot of updates on that and hopefully we can learn together some new ways to fish this awesome bait. 
Last but definitely not least is my second overall confidence bait and that is a hair jig. This is a half ounce Cumberland Pro hair jig. Absolutely love this bait. I've caught so many giant fish. I've won a lot of tournaments on this bait back in the day and it is again just probably of all the baits I've thrown my number two confidence bait of all time. I'll fish this in the winter, in the summer and I'll make a lot of videos hopefully this year throwing this bait again. I have several on the channel already and I think it's going to be a great compliment to that Demiki rig, to that Bastrix Flash Tricks, the big flutter spoon. It's kind of just a little bit of a different look, a little more subtle than a lot of baits anglers are throwing. And I also am interested to see how this works in the same situations where anglers are fishing the Demiki rigs, the jig head minnow style baits. So going to be throwing that a lot. Again, don't have a lot of experience throwing this bait with forward facing sonar. Honestly, when I have caught fish, even when I have live scope on the boat, I've just spot locked, fired out and just fished it like I normally do. I haven't had a lot of success watching this bait on live scope and catching fish. So I may have to kind of do a combo strategy of how I used to fish and how I hopefully will learn to fish with the live scope. And through all this, I don't want to abandon all of the experience I've gained over the years. I still want to use my side imaging. I still want to use a lot of my old school techniques. I want to figure out when to go to the bank versus when to use live scope, when to use live scope on the bank, all those things. There's so much to learn. And as I'm getting back into fishing more seriously again, it feels like there is an unlimited number of new things to learn and they have been unlocked with the forward facing sonar, which is extremely exciting. Honestly, after a while, it does get kind of repetitive using the same techniques and the same strategies over and over again on the lake. So having some new things to learn, new things to experience, I think is going to be very beneficial for my creativity and videos, my inspiration to actually go to the lake and learn new techniques, and hopefully beneficial to you as I can uncover new techniques to help you out in the water. Let me know if you enjoyed this video. It was kind of half like a perspective on the industry and the current situation in fishing, half kind of like my own personal goal video and strategy. So I don't know exactly what you took away from this video. So let me know down in the comments if you enjoyed this. And going forward, I'm gonna be going out to the lake a few days a week and I'm gonna be sharing my weekly findings with you based on all the new stuff I'm learning, maybe things I've learned in the past that I wanna reshare. Don't know exactly the format of the videos, but you're going to definitely expect a lot more content coming out Fish the Moment on this channel. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. We'll see you on the next one.